Yo, welcome back to the first Ultimate Theme Park video in 2022. The series started in January of 2017. So this park is around four years old now, and it just keeps on growing. I plan to keep on adding to it until my computer can't open up the park any longer. But I decided that episode 75 would be the last episode that I worked on the park before doing a final tour video. With this being episode 74, that means we have two more episodes of construction before the final tour video that everybody is waiting for, along with POV videos for every ride in the park. So this episode is going to be dedicated towards working on the interior of the volcano, where last episode we built the most expensive coaster in the park thus far. Then I placed a thrill ride named the Gears of Fear which is an insane looking thrill ride that has these chains and spits this fire around while flipping you around in tons of different directions. It's crazy, and it's inspired by this ride called the Backflash, which I've never ridden before, but it looks really fun. I've been waiting the whole entire series to place this ride because I always thought that this ride would look best inside the volcano, and so we're finally here. And then I'm gonna place one more thrill ride inside the volcano called the Cube, which this ride always has such a high excitement rating and it looks like it's really fun because you're placed in these seats that are in the middle of three rings that are all spinning in different directions and you feel such a weird feeling of g-force as you're getting like turned in all these different directions it's just like so much fun and i wanted to put some thrill rides inside the volcano to make it this own little secluded mini park that's indoors and then you knew i had to do it to him we're putting another roller coaster inside this area and I chose to use this coaster model called the El Loco which is known as Looney Turns and Planet Coaster. Now this is a coaster model that was developed in around 2010 by a company called SNS and it is known for having pretty tight coaster models and that is the reason why I wanted to use it in here is because we didn't have too much space to use and I wanted to keep it pretty compact. These coasters are also known for having drops that go beyond 90 degrees, sometimes around 110 degrees. So right out of the station, I have it drop straight down vertically just to freak you out. And then it pops back up over the path and then drops back down. And then while that has the momentum, I have it raised back up to the path just to kind of add to the scenery in the area. And then we have it dip back down into the darkness where the rest of the coaster is going to unfold. And then we have a hard bank left, giving some good lateral Gs. We do a half corkscrew into a half loop. That's gonna loop you back down with a lot of forwards momentum. That's gonna propel you through a nice airtime hill. Whoa. Okay, I guess the test alarms are going off in my city. I forgot the first Wednesday of every month, they always test the alarms. And it's, it's the first Wednesday of 2022. Oh my God, I can't believe it's 2022. This is insane. I'm wondering what theme park adventures are going to await me in the year 2022. I really wanna to go to the East Coast and hit a lot of theme parks this year. That's my number one goal. I wanna get a lot of East Coast inspiration because I haven't really gotten to theme parks on the East Coast. I'm also excited to see what coasters and rides get built this year. I hope Super Nintendo Land at Universal opens because I really wanna go there. And I really hope they build a Giga Coaster at Knott's Berry Farm, which there has been a lot of Giga Coaster rumors and that is the closest park to me. So having a Giga Coaster within a 30 minute drive would be phenomenal. And I would also like to go to San Francisco and San Diego to hit up a few parks as well, because I haven't really adventured too far out in California yet. And that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Do you guys have any theme park resolutions for 2022? Go ahead and share them in the comments section below. I'd like to hear about them. What rides or theme parks would you like to visit? And what rides are you hoping get built in any theme park near you? Now, I'm really not used to building coasters in this small of a space. So what I did right here is I started building backwards so I could kind of figure out where it was going to reconnect. So I didn't have a very definitive plan for this coaster. I was kind of just figuring it out on the fly. But my plan for this coaster was to have the chain lift at the very end of the coaster. So I built the chain lift backwards and I'm gonna find a way to reconnect it at the very end. Now I have built one of these coasters on YouTube before. It was the very first coaster that I put in my tiny park whenever I did that tiny park challenge which if you haven't seen that, you should totally check it out. It's a Planet Coaster series that you can watch in one day where I built the most epic tiny park ever. It is so cool. I'm so proud of it. And the very first coaster I built in that park was a Looney Turns coaster, one of these. And 
It is so compact, and even though it has a small footprint, it is such a long coaster. Now the coaster that we just built isn't too compact, but we just wanted to have it fit around all the things that we had built so far, and I managed to do it, and I think this is going to be the very last coaster we build in this park within the first 75 episodes. Now I do have some bonus video coaster plans that I'd like to do after the final park tour video, but the final park tour just needs to come. Everyone's been waiting too long. All right, now let's give this bad boy a test run. I haven't really smoothed it out yet, and we're going in fast forward, but let's just like check it out. Make sure it's fun to ride at least. Make sure it gets through the track. It's going so far, we have a nice little helix, and then a little slow portion just to take in some scenery. We go fast, and then another helix towards the end with a lot of force, and then it's towards the end it gets wrapped up. Ooh, that ending's pretty rough. Okay. Notice some changes, let's go ahead and smooth them out. I like this coaster, not my favorite, but it was just kind of hard to build with the limited space. But I think people will like it, and it has some cool scenery ideas. And if you don't remember the theming for this area inside the volcano, we're going for a psychedelic western hip hop experience. So it's going to be themed like a ghost town that has a lot of trap music playing in the background to just give like a modern western experience that we haven't really seen at a theme park before. Now this area was originally inspired by Astral World, which is the theme park themed concert that Travis Scott started. And I was planning on naming this area Astro Worlds, but I'm not going to for two reasons. One, because of the tragedy that happened at the concert, and two, because I don't want to name it after something else, like that's already been done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name it after the area that I grew up, which is the Ozark Mountains. And the Ozark Mountains are in Missouri. And that area has a very large country influence, for sure, so the western theming definitely matches. Silver Dollar City is also located in the Ozark Mountains, so I think it all works out. And that's where I grew up, and I also want to be a rapper myself, so the hip-hop and trap influence also kind of ties in there as well. And we'll just tie it all together and name this big volcano Ozark Mountain. It makes it more personalized for me, and I think it brings all the theming and scenery together in a cohesive way that makes sense. Okay, we fixed the coaster up. Let's give it another shot. Okay, that first drop feels way smoother. Okay, we go through just a couple inversions. Ooh, I'm liking this a lot. It's not too fast, but I think because of the area and the darkness, it's gonna feel way more quick than it really is. Kind of like Space Mountain. Okay, my game auto saves, so I jump cut right there. And let's watch it go up the chain lifts. I did a double chain lift because I thought I'd be better for block section reasoning. And yeah, I'm liking the way this whole entire thing came together quite a bit. And with all the new rides put in here, I think we're ready to start adding some scenery. <laughs> Let's go, that's my favorite part. And with the end of this coaster, I also want to ask you guys, if a coaster has a chain lift, do you prefer the chain lift at the beginning of the coaster or at the end? I feel like there's a lot of variables with that question, like depending on the type of coaster, but Kind of interesting question now that I think about it. So the first bulk of scenery work is going to be placing walls and concrete floors and ceilings everywhere just to kind of segment out this area because right now everything's just floating in place. So we got to make it feel like there's some sort of infrastructure going on here. And there's a lot of stuff to build around so this took me quite a while and it looks pretty sloppy at first but by the end of the episode it all ties together pretty well and it all it becomes pretty cohesive and makes sense. But I'm gonna try my best to make this look like a pretty expansive western town. We have a lot of space in this underground room, so I plan to make it seem like there's quite a bit of depth by adding quite a few buildings inside of here. My goal is to make the interior of this volcano look bigger than it really is. It's kind of similar to the goal of whenever you're trying to take a picture of your penis. You're trying to make it look bigger than it really is. Here we are, just placing concrete. I remember back when I was in college, I started like going for a civil engineering degree that I didn't follow through with because college is way too expensive and I decided that YouTube and entertainment was more my path than engineering. But I remember there was two required classes that I was supposed to take that taught about concrete. Like they had two courses about just concrete, which makes sense. I mean, concrete is used for almost everything. So I totally understand that. But imagine being the person who teaches the class about concrete. Now like some other areas of the park, I'm going to insert some custom buildings 
that are blueprints that are in the base game. That way I don't have to build every single building in this western section. Although I'm still going to build some more custom ones in here like I did for all the custom buildings outside of the entrance. Because we're going to need a whole lot of buildings if we're going to convince anybody that this is a whole western town. And while we're doing all this decoration, let's talk about the comic question from a couple episodes ago where I asked, in a Planet Coaster sequel, what are some things they could add to the game to allow you to make more money in a natural way apart from just like selling food, ride tickets, or park admission? Now in episode 72, I came up with lots of ideas like season passes, meal plans, and better gift shops. But you guys came up with some other good ideas, starting with this really cool idea where you get to pick the country where you start your theme park in, where a more popular country has a more expensive rent, but you get more guests, and smaller countries have smaller rents, but get less guests. And this could give some variety to the ways that we play and the way that you kind of approach your park. That coincides really well with this other idea that somebody came up with, where you add a company system that lets you build multiple theme parks and carry your money from one theme park to the next, which I think would be sick if you could start a theme park and it could be small and you generate some profit and you use that profit to jumpstart another theme park and then you have like two theme parks that you're gaining profit from and maybe there's like some way for them both to run at the same time and both gain money, kind of like the real world would, and allow you to like build a theme park franchise. That would be a real planet coaster. And I remember the Sim City game that came out like 10 years ago had a sort of similar feature where you could have multiple cities and send resources between them. And I think that idea could be fleshed out even better for a planet coaster game where you build multiple theme parks. Because what they could do is you could build one theme park and then make some money, use that to start another theme park. And while you're building on the other theme park, your first theme park is still making money at a certain rate and that rate goes down slowly depending on if you go back to that theme park and add on more stuff that would make it gain more money with like extra prestige and new rides and all that stuff. That would really add a whole new level of depth to this game. <laughs> that would be insane for like a career mode of some sort, rather than just getting theme parks from random locations that you have to build up to reach certain goals. Another great idea would be sponsors. Brands would pay you to put ads somewhere near the path or even have like rides sponsored by different IPs. That is how a lot of theme parks make money, especially things like Universal. But ads and sponsorships make so much sense. Like that is like the easiest way for theme parks to make money and like literally any sort of entertainment, honestly. Advertisement, come on. Another obvious solution would be charging for on-ride photos. But for some reason, Planet Coaster doesn't have on-ride photos. It'd be so cool if they did. You could actually like download them and like save them because Planet Coaster has tons of in-game cameras. Why not? Use that feature for on-ride photos. It would be so easy. And also another way to generate profit. And then another obvious way to make money would be parking. Theme parks make so much money from parking. I would love to see a theme park building game in the future that actually implements parking as one of the mechanics in the game. I know like right now it probably doesn't because it would be really weird to have that many vehicles. It would slow down the computers, but maybe in the future they can make it happen. And then one more idea I came up with is maybe events. You could have different events in your park, like maybe concerts or festivals, or people could rent it out specific days. Like more options to have special events where you can charge extra for tickets on specific days and like block things out. But honestly, I think the only way we could get a theme park game that truly feels realistic is if we had a theme park game where there is a day and nighttime cycle where the guests come in the morning and they leave and the park closes down during the nighttime and you got to choose the opening and closing hours and all that stuff. Because right now it's like the guest comes into the park and just stays until they run out of money and then they leave. And that could take weeks depending on how long the lines are. So we got to figure something out there. Although it seems pretty much impossible without literally making it like Animal Crossing and having the game replicate real time. It feels like simulating time in simulation games is like the hardest thing to do, which is it's really cool that Animal Crossing did it the way it did because not very many other games have been able to pull that off. If any, have any other games pulled that off? Like a day and night time system that matches the real world? It's cool how many developers have had to figure out how quickly time passes by in their video games. Like any game that has like an actual clock or day and night time system, the developer had to decide how long that day was. So like the developers are pretty much the gods of the world because they develop the land or the world that the characters exist in, but they also develop the actual time that they exist in too. 
they determine how long an in-world second is for those characters. And check it out, we talked about the whole entire comic question and I'm still not done building just like the structural foundation of this area. But we have two coaster stations in here, which coaster stations always take me a long time to decorate, and two new thrill rides, and I'm placing lots of gift shops, bathrooms, and some food in here as well. Because I want Ozark Mountain to be able to almost stand as its own miniature theme park. My other dream, if I could fit it somewhere, is if I could put some sort of concert venue inside this mountain as well. I'm not sure if I have the space, but if I'm creative enough, I could probably figure out something. But first, I have to build my solar panels outside, because I already said I would do the solar panels. So solar panels, and then concert venue. If my computer will allow me to do it. As a professional recording artist, I wonder how desirable it is to do a concert at a theme park venue. Theme park venues have a lot of people come through, but it might not necessarily be the demographic that you're looking for for your music. I feel like if you're an artist that's good at performing at a theme park, you need to be more of a family-friendly artist because the theme park's probably good to put like family-friendly constraints on you in the first place. So you're probably best off just being like a DJ with no lyrics whatsoever or just like a kind of general rock band that has good vibes. But in general, as an upcoming artist, I wonder if performing at theme parks is a good career move. It might at the least be a good way to make some money and just get a little bit of exposure. I'm having to do a lot of terrain work down here in the pit. Gotta make it look all nice and tidy and also make sure that everything looks structurally sound. Don't want anything to look like it's gonna crumble beneath you. <laughs> These are some pretty large structures inside this volcano, but you know, I'm just going all for it. Infinite budget, baby, let's go. Now on the opposite side of this cube spin ride, I'm gonna place this church to kind of like balance out the town a little bit more. We're gonna have multiple levels to this, so it looks like it just was built as this gigantic cave society. It kind of reminds me of that one book that was later turned into a movie called City of Ember, where they had this gigantic underground city where they didn't even realize there was a surface, and the only light that they knew about was light bulbs. Or, if we wanted to, we could just continue on the theme of Hyrule Castle, which is next to this mountain, and just say this is Death Mountain, and we're building Goron City right now. Even though Gorons never live in anything this elaborate whatsoever. So I don't think we could convince anybody of that. Even in Breath of the Wild, where they have the best city, it's still, it's not that great. <laughs> Poor Gorons. They're dumb and eat rocks. They can't help it. But I kept on placing buildings up here and really try to add some depth to the inside of this mountain. So you walked in and you saw buildings stretch on like way into the distance and it just makes you feel like you're in some other little world inside this volcano. You just want to keep on exploring and see what else there is to find. And I do have a dream of potentially putting one more roller coaster inside this mountain. I do have a way I could do it, but I'm not going to do that until after the Grand Park Tour where we keep on having bonus episodes, I guess. Like, I'm literally just gonna keep on building on this park until I can't. And since we only have two more episodes before the Grand Final Parks Tour, I'm definitely putting as much as I possibly can into each of these episodes so the park is as finished as possible because, you know, I put a lot of time into this park. I want that final tour to be worth it, man. Now, using these log pieces is how I truly brought this area together. This is how I added more depth and detail to all of these buildings. And I was also able to put it on the edge of all the concrete to make it feel like everything was being held up by something. And it just gives it more of a Wild West feel because this is the types of supports that they would use to build something like this back then. But it is my goal to get the interior of this volcano like 80% done this episode because in the next episode, I wanted to go through the whole entire park and just make sure that every single ride is finished and polished and cleaned up before we do the final tour. I would say there's like a 20% possibility I might do an episode 76 as well because we have to just see how much work I really have to do, but I'm pretty sure I can do it in one more episode. But please don't get mad at me if I have to do it episode 76 as well. I'll make it worth it, I promise. Okay, so now let's start adding some more intricate decorations to really make this all look a little bit better because right now it's a bit bland. There's a bunch of wood paneling and stone everywhere. Let's add more logs, windows, pipes, and all the little nifty things. The Wild West building blueprints that we put in already have a lot of detail, so that's helping us a lot to kind of just like establish a foundation. And we'll continue that decoration onto a lot of these other rides as well. 
It is cool seeing all of this come together though, because I feel like I've been leading up to this episode for the past three to four episodes, kind of building the ghost town thing outside, the new coaster. And so now it's all finally coming together and the vision is being broadcasted straight to your YouTube page right now. And I really can't wait to go through here and add the finishing polish because there's a few things that are a bit sloppy that I just didn't have time to fix. And then once it's all done, it's just gonna be so gooey and warm and yummy to eat. As I'm saying this, I'm like rubbing my hands together like this theme park is a delicious snack. But in a way it kind of is because I make money from these videos. So <laughs> building this theme park makes me money that buys me food that turns into delicious snacks that go into my belly. <laughs> And those snacks might be warm and gooey, like mozzarella sticks. And you guys already know that once we start adding this lighting, it's gonna make stuff look way vibier. <laughs> Cause right now we're using our big white spotlight and it just doesn't look too good for a dark, scary, mysterious Western area. So we gotta add the real lighting in here to really bring it all together. And also on a completely related side note, I haven't mentioned this yet on this series, but I finally opened up a Patreon. And a Patreon is a website to where you can pretty much subscribe to me to help support my channel and the videos that I create. It's especially a good website for people who watch videos with ad block on because they don't wanna watch ads, but they still wanna support the creator that they're watching. With that being said, if you would like to help support me financially on Patreon, I will have a link in the description below. Any financial help is greatly appreciated because I do live in California and it's pretty expensive out here and I wanna keep making videos like this. So any help is greatly appreciated. Now these stairs right here, I hate the way these look. They're so sloppy. These are one of the things I'm gonna fix in the next episode because I feel like they're kind of rushed and I have a better idea for how they could work. And also I don't really want stairs in here because then certain people can't go up and down them and that would be bad. <laughs> Every other area of my theme park is wheelchair accessible. I'm not gonna break that streak now. Isn't it wild to think that at the beginning of this episode, there was almost nothing inside this volcano and now here we are 20 minutes later and it's like completely transformed. Like this episode has been so productive. It feels like so much more is happening whenever we're building scenery in comparison to building rides. The scenery is what really brings it together and makes it interesting to look at. But I do love how we have new rides inside this volcano that I still haven't put anywhere else in the park. There is a lot of thrill and gentle rides in this game. I still wish there was more, don't get me wrong, but the fact that we have so many rides in this park and that every single ride is a unique ride is pretty impressive from a developer standpoint. And something else I think is cool is something like this existing isn't impossible because at that one theme park that I talk about a lot in the series, Silver Dollar City, they had this cave tour and the very first room that you go into in this cave tour is huge. You go down so many stairs, like 20 flights worth. It's so many stories high. And when you get to the bottom, they talk about the room and they said that they've actually flown hot air balloons in the room. It's like a gigantic cave. And they said they could fit several statues of Liberty inside the room. And it's about the same size as the interior of this room that I built inside this volcano. So Silver Dollar City, if they wanted to be badass, they could put a roller coaster down inside that cave and just completely flex on everybody. I don't know what the logistics on that are, but they built stairs and everything down there. So I don't know, I, they, they probably have to conserve the area, so they probably can. But I have been in a cave that has a room that is as large as the room that we are decorating right now. So this isn't entirely impossible. The good old Wild West. I feel like I have not watched enough Wild West movies in my life. Whenever I do watch one, they're really cool though. If you have any recommendations for a good Wild West movie, let me know them. I would love to hear it. I'm trying to watch more movies in 2022 so I can become a bit more cultured. You feel? We're getting close to the end of my work on this section. I'm gonna work on something else this episode though, don't worry. There's been something else that's been on my to-do list for a while. Let's just place a few last lights just to kind of get things lit up. And I'll come through here and put another couple hours of work before we do the final park tour. But damn, I am so happy with how this all turned out. So the last thing I'm gonna work on this episode is we need a station for this chairlift sitting out here because it's looking rather naked. I actually have a kind of elaborate idea for the station of this chairlift that I want to do in a bonus episode and I'm just going to build the foundation for that right now but there's something else I want to do here because I like the space that we have right here. 
I built a square foundation and then I'll kind of balance it off by putting a more rounded off upper section to the building. Any building that you build out of the sandstone building pieces typically looks pretty good. It's a nice looking build set and you can combine the pieces really well to just make something that looks polished really quickly. Now we gotta do some landscaping to just like kind of tie this area together. I'm adding these trees that glow in the dark during the nighttime and look rather beautiful. It kind of adds some pizzazz to this little empty plot that we have. And I totally think in a bonus episode we can build a roller coaster in this empty plot. I have some ideas. Like I honestly have ideas for five more coasters in this theme park that we could add, but I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. Right now we just gotta go back to the basics. We're landscaping. Gotta place our rocks and our bushes. It's just the basics, the planet coaster basics, man. And finally, for once, outside this volcano is looking fairly finished. It doesn't seem too empty. We have enough detail to where it feels finished enough for this final park tour. It's still one of the most empty areas of the park, but I think it's okay to have a little bit of negative space right now. And then I wanted to add these red lamps to kind of just start to change the vibe as you walk up to the volcano. Kind of just adding the red light just kind of gives you a little bit of a change of pace before you go into one of the most extreme sections of the whole theme park. And I was working on this section while my mom was visiting for Christmas. And while I was working on this, she walked inside and saw me placing these bushes and she said, oh, that's some nice landscaping. And I'm like, thank you. I'm glad you like my landscaping, mom. Maybe one day I'll build something impressive enough for her to wanna watch my videos. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. She hates video games with a passion. Even if it's a video game that doesn't feel like a video game, she has like practically a negative interest. But that's beside the point because we are at the end of yet another episode. We built so much this video and I am feeling good about it. So let's take one final sweep through the things that we have created today. And also if you have been enjoying the series and you want to help out, just a reminder that I have a Patreon you can become a supporter in the description below. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Have a great day.